This conference will now be recorded. Research states that when women earn a livelihood, 90% of this gets reinvested into the family through nutrition, education, sanitation, and other positive aspects. When you empower women, their children are more likely to finish their education. Their daughters are less likely to get married at a young age, reducing the risk of early pregnancies and reinforcing the cycle. Thus, the saying goes, when you empower women, you empower communities at large. And unlocking growth in our country really rests on this. Today's conversation will discuss the role of digital finance as an effective role to empower women and contribute towards poverty alleviation in India. Much of this will stem from practical experiences and evidence from the Digital Saki program, a flagship, flagship CSR program of l and Financial Services. The Digital Saki program is focused on women's enterprise development and digital financial inclusion, uh, currently across four states in India, with aspirations to scale this up even further. This program aims to empower 100 digital Sakis who are trained and empowered in financial literacy, digital modes of payment, leadership development, communication skills, and they take this knowledge and share this with the larger communities. In parallel, we're also working with 1,000 women entrepreneurs who are provided upskilling trainings in their technical trade, <coughs> trainings in enterprise development, and also trainings in digital financial literacy provided by the digital studies. The panel of speakers today have very rich experience in the respective fields and will, will be able to give us great insights into this topic. Allow me to introduce them. Mr. Satish has been the executive director of Sadan since March 2015. Prior to leading Sadan, he was a chief general manager heading the microcredit innovations department at Navard for nearly 15 years. Welcome, Mr. Satish. Thank Happy you. to have you. Thank you. Another speaker is Ms. Richa Button, the group head CS of CSR at LT Financial Services. Richard comes with rich experience over 15 years of working in the area of corporate social responsibility and sustainability. Having worked across diverse industries, including automobile industry, pharma, telecom, and financial services. Her expertise includes conceptualizing CSR programs that deploy management strengths and skill sets to deliver high impact, value driven social programs. Welcome, Ms. Richard. Lastly, we have Mr. Subash, the current executive director of a farm, the implementing partner organization for digital subject program in Maharashtra. He began his career as a junior engineer on the ground nearly 27 years ago with a farm and has been executive director for over a decade now. His expertise lies in agriculture, water resource development, program design, strategy, and execution. So again, uh, welcome Mr. Subash. So again, we have a very uh, well-experienced group here today uh, topic, speaking on this topic. So let's begin. Mr. Satish, could you talk a little bit about the role of digital finance as a medium for poverty alleviation in India? Uh, not only in India, but all across the globe, at least for the last 30 years, uh, financial inclusion has been recognized as a tool for uh, poverty alleviation, especially among, among women. And within this, when you talk about financial inclusion, uh, making this access universal is only possible through digital means because uh, accessing uh, people in remote areas is possible only with uh, digital finance. And uh, digital finance enables women especially to access a varied types of financial services like savings and thrift, credit, and it also enables them to receive the social service uh, benefits through the direct benefit transfer, which are their entitlements. Uh, and in a way, uh, even uh, <clears throat> uh, research and evaluation over the last uh, uh, two and a half decades has proved uh, that uh, in varying levels, uh, poverty alleviation has been possible by financial access, especially for women. That's, that's great, that's great. So using digital as a, a medium to access formal financial services and the uh, benefits that come with that. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful, great. 
Uh, Ms. Richo, we have another question for you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the early motivations behind l and Finance's CSR work in digital financial inclusion? And how did this eventually evolve into the Digital Sucky program that we know today? Yeah, I don't see the Digital Sucky program is very much in alignment with the government of India's uh, mission of driving a less cash economy. In fact, uh, our presence, you know, our rural presence, uh, when uh, demonetization happened, we could uh, see the distress that was faced by farmers and some of the rural community members. And that was the time that we decided that uh, why not take this agenda forward and uh, educate and make uh, people aware about various digital modes of payment that the government of India has been promoting and uh, use the women as a change agent to promote this uh, particular aspect. And uh, since we work very, uh, we have a microfinance business and we know women are our customers and we said that why not look at, you know, uh, look at these particular women uh, who can kind of, you know, uh, train larger community on these particular modes of payments and also understand what are the financial literacy levels existing in those areas. So that's how we decided to have a digital Saki program with a lady uh, who has good communication skills, who has a good rapport in the community, who um, displays leadership qualities, is, has, is, has basic education. She is equipped with a tablet, it is provided to them, where digital uh, a module is fitted into the tablet, which is developed in-house by LND Financial Services along with certain experts, uh, knowledge experts. Uh, and then she goes door to door, uh, educating a larger community on these uh, aspects. So uh, that's her role. And uh, each digital circuit, in fact, is given a target to reach a certain number of households. Um, we started with Maharashtra. Gradually, we have uh, scaled it up to North Four states in MP, in Odisha, and Tamil Nadu. That's great. That's great. So, so ecosystem kind of level um, um, events such as demonetization, government policies and priorities such as Digital India, and of course the needs on the ground. Yes. That's great, Mr. Subash. As uh, implementing partner for this Digital Saki program. Could you talk a little bit about the impact of the program on the digital suckies and the communities at large? Can you share some of these kind of stories of change that you've witnessed? Yeah, the Saki has almost two years of journey. And during the two years of period, there have been substantial changes taking in the life of the Sakis. So basically, there has been positive accumulated changes in the Saki itself as well as their family members. So earlier the Sakis was a part as well as good as like other members in the society. So during two years of the engagement with the program, they have been considered as a leader in the society because they have visited uh, almost door to door visit for the digital literacy campaign. And with the help of that, they have built a good rapport with the community. As a result of it, themselves they are adopting a digital modes of payment and helping the others to go for that kind of uh, digital transaction. Apart from the working as a uh, medium, they themselves started using internet, browsing internet, surfing for uh, uh, web information. I can quote an example like, so there are some digital circuits who are help, with the help of the uh, internet data, lot of educational materials they are surfing and downloading and using for the, uh, the uh, learning of the, their children. Because of this digital circuit program, she has become one of the earning member of the family. As a result, uh, is a wise is being taken consider in the family level decision making, and they have a good rapport with the uh, other communities also. The another uh, impact I can see that uh, most of the villages there are public gathering taking place, like we have this uh, flag hosting uh, event, because. She got a, a, good, a good impact on the society. The circuit has been invited as a, one of the chief guests for the flag hosting or other public gatherings. So it's been, it's a, it's leadership qualities and the shows. The another, uh, I think, is basically altogether trust building. Being a local lady, she has been helping the villagers, particularly the poor family members, for accessing government schemes and programs or the financial inclusion. So she become a, one of the uh, trusty, uh, delivering a good information how, how to approach, here to approach. And a large number of people are getting benefited out of his help, her help. That's great, that's great. So really have been able to see the, the change within the digital suckies themselves, the empowerment, the confidence, the leadership, how they're being viewed by their communities, 
And then of course, providing access to information like government schemes and uh, access to uh, formal financial services and even uh, access to knowledge as well. Yeah. That's wonderful, great. Uh, so Ms. Richa, um, so given L&T Finance's uh, domain expertise in microfinance and even providing loans to women entrepreneurs, how did this all contribute towards the design of the program? See, Rahul, that's how, uh, like I mentioned, you know, when we have programs, uh, typically how a CSR program runs, you know, uh, if you're looking at a, an extraction-based industry or a manufacturing facility, you have plants around which you would like to have your CSR programs so that goodwill is generated. Similarly, we also saw our business adjacency. That's the core criteria. So we see to it that, you know, uh, wherever we have meeting center presence, we take up villages there. We uh, identify digital centers within those villages and educate the larger communities there. So uh, basically, there are two, three things associated with it. One is, of course, geographies, uh, which are selected, um, which are taken from the business teams, as well as when we do a needs assessment survey to understand the core need needs to be there. So we do needs assessment survey, then we do infrastructure uh, feasibility assessment study because you are teaching and teaching digital modes of payment. So we need to have uh, access to smartphones have to be there, your internet availability needs to be there. So that is taken into account. And then baseline study is done to identify the indicators of change. That's how we kind of uh, take up the digital center program. So our, uh, the, the very fact that you know, we do the digital center itself is we're using our uh, business agency. So that's a core thing. Of course, being a financial institution, we thought, thought of taking up this as a core trust area because we have expertise. So like our module that I spoke about, it's set up in-house by uh, LNT, uh, LNT Financial Services, the CSR team, the learning and development team. Uh, we, of course, use the open source uh, modules that are available by the RBI and certain experts so who have digital modes of payment expertise. So that's how the module was developed. And uh, we've been uh, using this module, digital studies have been using this module extensively. So both the things, adjust business adjacency is something we have taken into account uh, through our uh, microfinance business and using our own expertise as a financial institution to develop the module. And we continue to do that. That's great. Wonderful to hear. So leveraging the uh, business expertise, uh, the geographic kind of presence, and then of course, aligning that with needs on the ground. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. So, uh, Mr. Subhash, uh, in terms of the on-ground implementation, can you talk to us about the role of women as community change agents <coughs> for digital finance? Are there any specific benefits of involving women in particular to drive this kind of change? Yes, certainly, yes. I think you would know that India being a, a male-dominated uh, culture, so one of the major challenge was how this woman can come out of it her home and work with the community. So the program has, uh, being a digital Saki as a lady, uh, with the technical handholding support from the program team, they could come out and help to others for the digital financial literacy. So with the help of that, uh, his, her own identity has been established in the community and he has been, she has been recognized in the family members also. Secondly, being a lady as a digital sake, uh, she could easily reach out direct to the women member of the visiting households. So being a lady, she could interact very comfortably with the lady, lady members visiting the houses. And with the help of that, uh, any queries come to the women member, and the women member also directly started approaching to the uh, digital sake. So we have a good communication was possible because of being a uh, lady. So as a result of the, uh, the lot, large number of the women members, they started approaching bank for a bank account opening. Some of them also already started banking transactions and they are using the debit cards for uh, making payment and so on. So this, this, it was possible only because of the lady being a digital sake, uh, with the help of it, she could approach it. Another aspect, I think, uh, Basically, the entire Dijisaki program is primarily is basically a women's eco economic empowerment program. So, in the program, there was another component which is promoting the women entrepreneurs. So, with the help of uh, the program, the women entrepreneurs are able to expand their businesses, started their increase in their volume, and because of it, they are really increasing uh, their income and contributing to the family uh, progress. <laughs> so, with the help of the digital Saki, the women entrepreneurs are also able to do a business transactions by using the digital modes of payments. 
Yeah, I just want to add in there. In fact, uh, because the because the aspect of women entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, you know, it's not just so uh, we realize very in the early beginning only that you know it's not just the financial literacy that we need to look at. We also need to look at the livelihood base. And that's the reason why the second leg was added parallel while we start program uh, working on women entrepreneurs and upskilling them on agri and agri allied trades because education is one thing but the base remains the livelihood. So uh, in fact, the entire digital sakhi program has been co-created. You can say with LPFS, our NGO partners, and the community needs. You know, the fact that Subhashji mentioned about entitlement training. That also, when we do, we regularly do stakeholder workshops to understand what are the needs of the community and what do they want really. So entitlement was added then, and in all of our program, whether it is Maharashtra, MP, Tamil Nadu, and going forward in Odisha, entitlement training is also uh, uh, very much part of the uh, digital safety program. They understand what the government scheme, government schemes are, then made into a. In fact, there's a good module that we have prepared, which is animated version for entitlement, and then that is also given to the larger community. So it's a, it's a continuous process of taking feedback from community, from our NGO partners, from other stakeholders. And then uh, you know we develop the module uh, kind of thing. That's how it. Uh, That's great. That's great. And I guess in today's uh, in today's country, when you see programs that are not necessarily that don't necessarily have a gender lens, they tend to be just naturally a little bit less inclusive. So when we have women as change agents, then women have also on the ground have more comfort, and it just inherently becomes more inclusive in nature. This is uh, actually you can see. In the way that uh, now, with regard to the uh, penetration of uh, bank branches and the formal financial services, uh, as per RBI data, we have nearly five and a half lakh uh, EC agents. And at uh, large spaces, uh, there are a lot of uh, dissatisfaction generally expressed yeah. with regard to services. But there, uh, we feel that, uh, based on my experience, uh, it, digital Saki acting as a, a business correspondent at the bank, since she is from that village and she is from that community, adds a lot of value rather than a BC agent who comes from somewhere in a nearby yeah. town, is in that village for a few hours and goes by. So I think uh, um, going further, I would think that uh, we should try to convert all these six line BCAs <laughs> to bank Sakis. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great, especially the leveraging that community connect that you mentioned, yeah. and the leadership, the, that view of being a leader in the community that uh, Mr. Subhash mentioned. Yeah, we have various things to sustainability of the program. Obviously, uh, like, you know, you cannot go on um, just, you know, I mean, uh, the digital sakis, I think one of the question was that are they paid? They are right now paid, you know, they are given an honorarium. But how long will that payment? They need to be sustainable, right? So one of the ways, like um, Mr. Pratish was suggesting, could be that. They could be alternatively, uh, we can also look at a model because like how we had introduction of entitlement schemes, you have community asking this should say, please tell us this. And she can charge a community a community member of telling about the schemes. Let's say if the Mudra scheme is there, she can take a person there, give them access to loans, do that entire paperwork and charge them somewhat. So they can become an entrepreneur on their own. In that, uh, support can be taken from larger, from larger corporate houses to have a seed capital. So of course we are there, but we are, now looking at collaborations wherein other companies can also come in and look at you know how, how we can create a sustainable model of uh, this digital safety program and further scale it up. So uh, there are various ways through which uh, sustainability can be ingrained as part of our digital safety program. That's great. That's great. So sustainability through these market-based approaches right. uh, yeah. and then also through partnerships as well. Yeah. In fact, other dimension now, I think there are a lot of startups working on uh, you know uh, solutions, uh, tech-based solutions for financial inclusion. And the other day, I was in another conference, and uh, you know, we were discussing that how can we involve them also as part of you know um, they get the market to do you know a pilot of their product, and digital Saki can use those products to further enable uh, financial inclusion, so they can become that uh, you know their agents kind of a thing. So there are multiple things that we are exploring, uh, you know, with regard to digital Saki. Right now, it's just two and a half years of project. We would definitely like to scale it up. And further, uh, you know, uh, in fact, plans are there to uh, look at about uh, 600 odd digital circuits financially, uh, and uh, gradually, uh, you know, take up uh, even entrepreneurs. We'd like to scale it up. But uh, further, how sustainability can be ensured? That's where, in fact, we're looking at a lot of collaborations to take place. Whether it is startups, whether it is other corporate houses, whether it is industrial houses, maybe a southern can support us in that. Let's see, you know, how it goes. That's great. That's great. Uh, 
great. <coughs> great to hear it. Cool. Uh, Mr. Satish, uh, given your experience uh, working at the ecosystem level, working with Navard, I uh, wanted to understand, where are we today with respect to penetration of digital finance? And where do we need to be? What are some of these systemic institutional enablers that will allow for this? With regard to penetration, I would say that uh, uh, we have six lakh villages in India and uh, 50,000 bank branches. Uh, and as I was mentioning, uh, kind of lack uh, points of access. So all these points of access are on a digital mode. So it means that uh, to the extent that uh, access has reached a point in the rural India, uh, we now accomplish the uh, digitization part. So now the next comes is to usage. Uh, uh, and uh, we have done a lot over the last uh, five years, like every year the POS machines, the numbers are uh, getting doubled and all. But still, uh, we are uh, uh, behind some of the economies like China in terms of uh, numbers. Then another is that uh, mobile usage as an instrument of uh, digital financial access. Africa has done a lot. We have to do a lot in that. Uh, because the ownership of mobile phones is there. Uh, women ownership of mobile phones. There is a lot of things uh, which needs to be done there. And, uh, and also with regard to digital financial literacy of women. Uh, wherever we have uh, projects and capacity building uh, initiatives, uh, we are able to do that. Uh, but in other areas, uh, there are still a uh, uh, lot of gaps which uh, need to be filled up. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, mainstream financial institutions, microfinance institutions, uh, added with the uh, support of government, uh, we have to we have a lot to do uh, to take these services and make them more widespread. Definitely, definitely. And I like how you broke it down. And I think this is an important point, kind of focusing first on awareness of digital financial services, also in parallel working on access and infrastructure for financial services, digital financial services especially, going where brick and mortar kind of banks can go. And then again, ensuring adoption of these kind of digital financial services, kind of that spectrum of, uh, of adoption. So and that's where the needs assessment survey comes handy. See, yeah. we are running a program in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, and Odisha also, and NP. Everywhere the needs assessment survey gave a different finding. Yeah. So uh, while you know in Maharashtra we started with digital financial literacy and then the livelihood part, in Odisha we are first starting with the livelihood program and then adding the literacy and then digital financial literacy. So the needs assessment plays a critical role. Follow parallelly, we need to check the uh, infrastructure feasibility. Like Mr. Sadi was rightly saying, uh, there are smartphone users available, but how many women have access to yeah. it? So one is that a question. That itself is a is the first barrier we need to break. That uh, identification of digital Sadi is uh, the criteria is made in such a way that at least basic phone they should have the feature phone. So uh, at least that part is there. Then obviously as of now we are equipping them with a tablet, which yeah. uh, which has additional modes of payment. But gradually we are seeing to it that, you know, uh, in that module, again, USSD is there, which is feature phone based. Uh, thing. So we have kept a mix of, you know, where people don't have smartphones, they have feature phones, they can use, use USSD. Other places we can use the, uh, the other uh, digital modes of payment. So you base, uh, your needs assessment survey plays a critical role in deciding the nature of intervention. You begin with livelihood, begin with financial literacy. In some places, I think we are also involved, is involved in setting up of accounts also. Yeah. Well, obviously, okay. there, through uh, Jantan Yojana, uh, majority of people have it, but some of the remote villages that we yeah. see, sometimes so even uh, access to uh, uh, yes, you know, accounts and all this was yeah. part of the issue for his room. That's great. So using these kind of needs assessment to drive program design and to drive decision making. Yes. Seems to be very critical. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. Uh, Mr. Satish, another uh, question for you. So what challenges do you see today in terms of women not being integrated into the formal kind of financial services into this kind of value chain? And uh, how can digital finance enable enable this as well? No, uh, to a large extent, actually, uh, the integration of women into the financial services has been happening over the last two decades. But yes, there's still gaps. And uh, one of the 
areas which contributed to women's uh, access to more financial services in the work in the work which happened in the microfinance sector, self help group sector. Uh, so, in a way, uh, microfinance as well as uh, uh, in this uh, SSG module, uh, they're enabling the women to get in touch with the formal financial systems, even to access a bank account and uh, uh, go to the bank and do the financial uh, transactions. Uh, but the gap there is with regard to financial literacy, uh, where uh, the data shows that uh, women are still behind uh, men overall in India in terms of uh, financial literacy. So that's one uh, great challenge which uh, uh, we will have to tackle because uh, financial literacy for women we can't really do in a classroom type of uh, yeah. uh, training. Okay. So we will have to have uh, methodologies which are suitable to them. And uh, along with that, uh, along with uh, the literacy training, uh, the access to the various uh, OKR okay financial products will enable the women to use them more. Like, uh, First, they start off with savings and thrift, then go to credit, and uh, other services like insurance, the benefit transfers from the government and all. So this will enable women to be on par with uh, the male population as far as access to finance is concerned. Yeah, that's how the, the, this, uh, uh, just to add to that, you know, so financial literacy uh, in the Saki program is through peer learning. Yeah. That's the reason why it's because uh, of course, you can get them, you can open up financial literacy center and you can get them to educate. But what a woman, you know, she goes door to door explaining. She's from their own community. She's like her, you know, uh, the lady of the house, she's her, her she, she actually sees that she's the one who's getting things. Yeah. Wrong. She herself sees that, okay, I'm the one, you know, uh, who's getting all the knowledge. So uh, the, a lot of trust is there on this issue. Uh, a lot of, uh, um, they feel that they can give us information any time of the day. So uh, it breaks the barrier. You know, of going and, and then she comes to house, they don't have to go anywhere, you know. So that way, uh, it's uh, access to information at a lower uh, step. Yes. So that's something uh, which I felt, uh, you know, which I feel is, uh, I think, uh, somewhere it is working. I mean, maybe yeah, Subhash, yeah. can uh, uh, throw more light on it. That, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when the program was born two, two years before, so basically, uh, one of the major aspects, although there is infrastructure available, the awareness and know-how is very crucial. Uh, so, and obviously, literacy level is one of the challenge. But with the help of this digital Saki kind of interventions, initially in the program design, we thought about only organizing a digital literacy camp. Yeah. But we realized that in the literacy camp, the public forum, so mainly the main members attend, and the women members not have access to go for public gathering. So immediately after. Uh, Three months immediately, we changed our strategy and decided that the digital circuit will visit house to house and interact with the uh, women members directly. And it has helped very much actually because with the help of this uh, tablet, she can demonstrate the uh, actual the practices, how to use and how to make a transactions and so on. And another experience is that prior to start of this digital literacy, the basic financial literacy is very crucial. So. <laughs> and depend on the level of understanding and education level, uh, one can say either go directly for digital financial literacy or start with the basic financial literacy and then add on uh, digital financial literacy. So another uh, issue, I think we realize that the infrastructure available, know-how is available. The another ecosystem related challenge I, I see is that because in rural areas, still in rural areas, the entire most of the economy is cash driven. So, although people are there, infrastructure is available, but the whatever the transition taking place, the most of the merchant in the market, uh, they are not really uh, give their preference to uh, receive payments in cash cash mode. So, I think this is one of the challenge needs to be addressed at the broader level, uh, so that uh, if any interested party make a payment, uh, that kind of facility has to be available. Yeah, I think that enabling ecosystem is yeah. like just yeah. very important on the merchant side, on the consumer side, yes. you know, infrastructure, network, and, and everything. Actually, we are, we are trying to 
trying in a, a pilot project to create uh, some geographies where uh, almost entire thing, I will say almost, because <coughs> at least some cash, traction, cash transactions will still be there. But trying to do that, bringing a financial institution, uh, bringing a mainstream financial institution and a technology supplier, and all the local service providers. So we were successful in one geography in the east. Now we are working out in the north. So probably if we get good results, we can show to the nation and the policy makers that this is the way you go to create an entire geography of a cashless environment. But it is a difficult task. I would say that it's not an easy thing and it will not happen overnight. Yeah, one of, one of the... We are out where thinking in a digital program in the coming years. So some of the women entrepreneurs, they are the shopkeepers. So these all shopkeepers were, were trying to get the shopkeepers registered with the bank as a vendor. And once they get registered as a vendor, they can have a, a post machine available uh, in their shop. I think this will facilitate uh, in a way uh, to go, go for kind of a digital modes of payment. At least the use of debit card can be promoted to this kind of thing. So this is the uh, coming period where thinking that some of the shopkeeper lady will be converted into vendor. Okay, so good, right? Yeah, yeah. And I believe, like, uh, you know, to ensure adoption, like even starting with these kind of day-to-day -day transactions, you know, like yeah. buying, yeah. you know, different day-to-day -day items, paying your electricity bill, yeah. and these other kind of things through your your mobile bill through digital mode seems to be like, um, you know, the best kind of leeway in. Great, wonderful. So, uh, Mr. Subhash, uh, another question for you. Um, in regards to challenges in implementation, uh, so what have been some of the biggest both challenges and learnings from implementation of the digital SEPI program? And how did you kind of customize course correct along the way to ensure like uh, success? I think some of the some of the things are already elaborated uh, indirectly, but still I can add here. Yeah. The biggest challenge was uh, how these women, rural women, come out of their houses, attend different uh, training events. Uh, it's applied to the Digisaki as well as for the women entrepreneurs also, because for women entrepreneurs for the enterprise management training and for the upscaling training, uh, she has to be ready to go out for at least three four days continuously for training. So that kind of mindset development uh, was a very crucial in the initial period. But somehow, because of the team and the digital security, being the lady from amongst them, will able to address uh, that kind of thing. The another challenge initially I faced that how to reach out to large number of uh, women folk in the society. So the strategy we adopted was basically, as I said, the reaching out to the door to door visit. So these are the things. The another. Uh, uh, aspect uh, about the ownership, we discussed already about the access and ownership of the uh, smartphone to the uh, women. So, uh, having seen the benefit of this uh, digital interventions, so nowadays situation in the project village like that, uh, at least the one member of the house have a, a smartphone available. So, we, we are realizing that in large number of houses, now this lady from Using the either son's uh, smartphone or the husband's smartphone for um, like making a payment of electricity bills or TV recharge. Uh, some of the ladies have already started kind of online shopping and making uh, uh, train or bus reservations online. So these are the things that are happening slowly, slowly. Yeah. In fact, uh, when we did our uh, inline service, you know, we have baseline service and we do inline service. We could see that the usage of mobile wallets and debit cards has actually gone up. Yes. Uh, we have uh, stories where you know women have gone along with their husbands on their scooters and filled uh, you know petrol yeah, using yeah. debit card at the petrol pump. And uh, mobile wallets, like uh, Subhash was saying, uh, are been extensively used. Of course, yeah. we have various cash uh, back offers which yeah. encourages them to use it. Yes. But uh, this education has helped them uh, to use these mobile wallets. So uh, these two particular uh, modes of payment we have seen yeah, uh, an uh, upward trend uh, yeah. after our intervention. Of course, we are looking at uh, change improvement in the USSD-based uh, yeah. transaction, and APS we gradually see from this year onwards because we're working with, going to be working with merchants. Yeah. We're trying to do pilot at uh, Maharashtra and in Tamil Nadu. 
So we'll be working very closely with the uh, women entrepreneurs who are running Kirana schools. Yeah, that's great. It seems like uh, through this program that that almost that business case has been made for using cashless modes of payments. That it's easier, yeah. quicker, cheaper, more convenient, and so forth. Yeah, with respect to the, uh, I think you asked about the learn, what are the major learnings coming out of the program. I think one of the major learning is that, since I already mentioned that uh, the India is being a male driven society, and the program, and that program is focused on women empowerment, the women uh, entrepreneurs and digital skills. So I think uh, uh, although the program focuses on the women empowerment, parallelly we have to sensitize the male member of the houses. Therefore, uh, initially what we did, our digital sati, instead of only visiting only a uh, woman member in the house, so we strategically decided that all members of the houses are sitting together and the digital sati providing them a demonstration of practices of how to use of digital modes of payment. So that kind of a continuous interaction, both with the women members as well as the male members, some kind of resistance to taking women out is as a reduced substantially. Other, another challenge which uh, maybe uh, Subhashi might uh, explain more, but I felt was also to convince Rishul Sakhi to uh, get us, see they are all given targets, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, ensuring that they are in that mode of, you know, running and uh, they have to ensure that they are reaching about 1000 people, that particular, uh, you know, uh, orientation was a challenge. Gradually they understood that, you know, this is for their own, uh, you know, community upliftment and they will, they obviously getting paid for that, but they need to do that. It took uh, them time yeah, to yeah, yeah. Uh, to Realize become that, that uh, yeah, become that driven because they were into their own, you know, uh, their own, own setup and uh, like you know, confidence was also a gap. But gradually, uh, once they started, you know, having the confidence of being more mobile and going to other villages and the fact that they need to fulfill target with a lot of so, they, so there's a lot of pressure on digital yeah. also yeah. to do that. And uh, th that's where the role of our implementing partners is. And that's the way to become professional because that's how even we work, right? We all have targets, right? So that's how we're looking at issues that these two also kind of, and they feel empowered, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, when we do a, you know, a conclusion events, uh, like how we have a, you know, stakeholder events towards the end of the year, you have issues that coming and they come very thrilled that, you know, uh, Didi, I have achieved my target and actually I've overachieved my target. So you have your issue that he's uh, having that kind of happiness and you feel good about it, you know. So, uh, that's yeah. great, that's great. So it yeah. really seems like there has been this transformation on the ground with these women. And I think uh, Mr. Subash brought a really good, important point uh, up as well. Like we talk about being inclusive and being inclusive doesn't necessarily mean just targeting women, you know. Yeah. Being inclusive means engaging with both genders as well. Definitely. Yeah. And another learning, I think, <coughs> you know, basically, uh, one has to visualize. So, since the inception of the program, uh, the digital Saki, the lady from the village, has been on the focus for, for all events on activities in the villages. So, uh, being a woman being a change engine, so one has to visualize and uh, his visibility has to be continuously in the community. With the help of that, uh, Automatically, once you start interacting with the community continuously, so her confidence and leadership quality get automatically enhanced. That's great, wonderful, great. And uh, I guess Richard, you spoke you spoke a little bit about it in terms of making this model sustainable. You know, from that on ground perspective, um, you know, you mentioned being absorbed by you know different uh, different occupations or becoming entrepreneurs themselves. Right. And what would you say is like the long-term vision of this digital safety program? Uh, see, Rahul, uh, it's a, you know, uh, we started with about 100 digital safeties. Uh, now there are about 400 of them. We can look at, uh, you know, making 400 to, let's say, other 4,000 or something like that. But we need collaborations. Like I mentioned, we are looking at other corporate houses, other, uh, you know, um, implementing partners, other uh, industry bodies to join hands and scale up this particular model. Because we've seen it working. It has uh, everything. It has a peer-based learning. It has a, there's a module which is in place. Um, you know there are these uh, you know uh, you have implementing partners who have expertise there. So we are looking at how we can now look at uh, collaboration with other uh, partners to scale this particular model. That's something which we are definitely looking at. 
And from a sustainability point of view, I've already mentioned that uh, we would definitely like to have, you know, maybe five years down the line, these digital sakhis are on their own. Yeah. You know, they become either agents of, uh, you know, promoting digital modes of payment because digital sakhi has an identity of, with regards to digital financial services. So primarily, we would like her to promote that, you know, and ensure adoption is happening in the community. And while she's ensuring adoption is happening, she can be part of any of the, either of the startup ecosystem or other players in the market, or she can become a banking correspondent, it's up to her, obviously. Or we, she can become an entrepreneur, like, yeah. you know, how we have, and she starts starting community, she set up her kiosk and all. You know, so there are different modes that we can look at, you know, in terms of sustainability. That's great. Wonderful here to hear. So really keeping that long-term uh, sustainability, life, life, uh, sustainable <coughs> livelihoods in mind yeah. is definitely key. Great. So um, as part of this, uh, this webinar, we did kind of seek a lot of questions from the, uh, the attendees. Uh, and we've kind of uh, selected a few of these questions that, um, that the participants wanted to know. So I'll just kind of pose this for the, for the larger group. One question was asked uh, regarding motivation. So how do you keep women motivated for this program? Um, you know, and how do like women kind of uh, overcome some of these systemic barriers, say, like uh, language barriers or literacy barriers, uh, numeracy barriers, and so forth. So, how do we keep the women motivated in this program to engage throughout? I think the motivation has two levels. So one is motivation at the digital security themselves level, and another is basically motivating digital security, motivating other women in the society. When it's come to the motivation of the digital security, as we already discussed, that uh, so by selection of the digital security certain criteria was set down and motivation we realized that motivation come from the training capacity building continuous hand holding and troubleshooting support from the program team so wherever there was some issues technical queries or in any kind of communication related issues so backstopping support was available for digital safety so with the help of that kind of backstop backstopping support uh, she could perform better great wonderful thank you Another question was about financial products. So, um, you know, which financial products so far have been the most impactful for rural women? You know, it could be part of the digital safety program or even like yeah. broader kind of uh, across the country. Actually, if you see uh, across, the first thing is uh, contrary to what we generally assume, uh, savings and thrift is the most important uh, financial product which uh, women want to have. Because they know that through thrift, whatever they save is first used for the family, for the children, for the emergencies, and for small uh, uh, infrastructure related things in the home. And next comes the credit product. And third, I would say, is the transfer of benefit transfers from government, which they are uh, entitled uh, legally, various types of uh, pensions and other social services. Uh, other areas where, especially where uh, uh, family members uh, stay outside, uh, uh, go outside to work. Remittances plays an important part in uh, the digital financial services. But those products which uh, we should uh, look at for uh, improving and increasing uh, in India across are insurance and pension products. These are the products which uh, are to be uh, uh, taken to the people in a bigger way and uh, the penetration of these two products is quite less now. Yeah. In fact, we keep getting questions on insurance uh, yeah. because we've been interacting. Uh, so we have program uh, around watershed work also where we work very closely with farmers. So both are target group, whether it is women entrepreneurs or our farmers, they have been very keen on understanding what are some of the products on crop insurance, cattle insurance. Yeah. These are very common, uh, uh, so they ask the digital circuits because they are the ones who are, okay. so we have, within our module, we have, a, you know, education, so we have one on insurance and another one on pension, yeah. Mod, there are two modules on that. So while education is happening and they know that these are the schemes of the government, but what are different other products that are existing in the market? They want to have uh, understanding and they want to adopt it. So that's uh, definitely one uh, area yeah, that we keep yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So it seems like these kind of financial products, uh, Reducing risks in two regard. Why did, I mean, in, in terms of keeping um, these kind of savings into interest bearing accounts rather than kind of keeping it under the mattress where it is not very safe and secure. 
and then of course risk mitigating risk in the other regard in terms of insurance and so forth you know natural disasters and kind of that might impact livelihoods as well yeah. yes, yes yes great wonderful cool uh wanted to see like um maybe this is more of an e ecosystem level uh question like what are some of the roles of uh, MFIs and banks in terms of uh, providing access to uh, financial services, digital financial services? Like, what role do, do banks have to play in this? Well, I would say that uh, uh, banks should get uh, more involved by taking on board the, uh, the entire world setup of uh, digital financial circuits in the sense that they have to realize that uh, this. Uh, Medium is a, an effective one for them to enhance their businesses in the rural areas, both in terms of savings, uh, spread of their credit products. So, in the longer term, if the banking sector engages uh, more deeply with the digital financial circuits, uh, it will pay them a huge dividend in terms of uh, business expansion of their uh, rural branches. Usually, they say that uh, businesses are not. Uh, business roads are a little flat in these areas. So I would suggest that uh, uh, leveraging the presence of digital uh, circuits in rural areas would make immense business sense for the banking sector. Of course, microfinance institutions always uh, uh, are engaging with women, but uh, they also can uh, take the help of uh, uh, these services of digital circuits. Wonderful. She is available round the clock, you know, actually yeah. she is there in the village. Yes, in the so uh, if there are, you know, issues with regards to, uh, an, you know, a non-payment or something like that, there can, there is a support existing, you know, so she can ensure that. So that's, the, I think that's the connect, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, Satish, so uh, in case for future, again, sustainability part, she can be one of the feet on street. Yeah. And uh, ensure that, you know, uh, the payment is happening on a regular basis. That's again an, another angle to look at. I think he did mention about banking that is quite so mm -hmm. those are also things. Yeah, so it, it seems like both uh, <laughs> technology as an enabler and then even that kind of still complementing that on ground yeah. presence yeah. as well. Yes, yes. And the on ground on the person who has the on ground presence has the technology as her weapon. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this takes the thing uh, forward yes. in a much bigger way. It combines, uh, the program combines women empowerment and digital finance. These yes. two are connected in this particular model. And that's the reason why we see working in different geographies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Wonderful. Cool. Um, another question was, um, as an individual with um, expertise in financial literacy, how can that person kind of help serve the community, you know, leveraging their technical knowledge in financial literacy and so forth? How can like everyday citizens kind of get involved and support this kind of ecosystem in their own way? Uh, actually, if you see the absence of uh, uh, financial literacy is not confined to people with uh, less educated levels. It also happens with uh, well-educated yeah. people. So, in the way, in the sense that uh, uh, which is the financial product? In which I should get involved with, which is a financial product I should not uh, get involved with, what are the basic features of uh, each of these uh, products. I think these are uh, very important uh, <coughs> elements as far as uh, financial literacy and knowledge is concerned. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, in, in a longer term, uh, if financial literacy is more widespread, then uh, there will be no scope or place for uh, any uh, unscrupulous persons or groups to spread uh, uh, questionable financial products among the people, which even now on and off it uh, happens, where uh, people are uh, uh, denied the ultimate benefits of whatever they say or whatever they put it as a thing. So this is a very, and also in terms of using the credit product, they should know that how much rate of interest I am paying. Is it a correct rate of interest? Yeah. Or the way the uh, financing institution is telling me about the rate, is it really correct? Uh, because if you say that 
I am pay, paying only 10 paisa per day uh, for uh, this amount. But ultimately, it may transform to some 3,000 percent per annum. So all such things are really important to ensure that uh, hard-earned money of the people, especially the poorer people, uh, is not taken away by others. Definitely. Yeah, I know. I think it's a great point that you mentioned that um, financial literacy is not just a rural problem. You know, you see that same kind of issues happening in urban areas. It's not a socioeconomic problem that's facing just face of the pyramid markets, but even well-educated and higher kind of income earners as well. So I think that's a very important point to, to call out. Great. Another question about Digital Sucky program was, um, how have learnings from one state kind of been replicated and transformed in, in other states? What is that kind of degree of uh, standardization across the program? And then that those localization efforts as well. So as I mentioned before, Rahul, um, the needs assessment survey plays a critical role in uh, understanding the situation which is existing on ground. While the model is there, uh, it's ready model, and a lot of learning, in fact, from Maharashtra we took when we were uh, when we did a launch of uh, MP project, and when we uh, are now you know uh, say increasing our uh, Tamil Nadu and Odisha presence. Uh, learnings from Maharashtra and MP are now helping us implement the program. Uh, whether it is uh, monitoring the digital sakhis and their outreach, whether it is convincing the men folk, whether it is uh, increasing the outreach of digital sakhi, how to increase that number. So all that uh, you know uh, has been helping us in implementing the other states program also. But at the same time, uh, like I mentioned, the assessments of your Odisha told us that you know there is a uh, gap in the livelihood first. So let us look at fulfilling that first. Followed by basics of financial literacy, which is part of our module, and then look at uh, initiating digital modes of payment. So uh, we are now, so we tweak the model as per the assessment survey. And in Tamil Nadu, our finding was that you know people were already using the various digital modes of payment. So adoption can take this faster. So digital sakhi program, while it starts with education and access, it eventually moves to adopting the digital modes of payment. So in Tamil Nadu, we are already trying to do, like I mentioned, the pilot amongst the Kirana shopkeepers. How, which are the modes of payment that we can start adopting now? So, Rishul Sakhis will decide educating the community, will also look at adopt, adoption rate. So, all that comes from an assessment survey that, uh, that these are the local uh, realities, and that's how you need to tweak the model everywhere. Um, <coughs> besides that, there is, of course, a language challenge. So, in uh, Odisha and Tamil Nadu, uh, we have Rishul Sakhi uh, module which we convert into the vernacular. So, both uh, whether it is the main module or the animated version. So the, the entire module also has animated uh, versions which are two two minutes kind of a visual yeah. animated videos which are converted to Tamil, which are converted to Odia, so that the local people and Sakhis can easily translate that. So both language uh, part is taken care of. Besides that, obviously we tweak the model as per the local uh, assessment survey, and then we see to it then we find indicators as per that. That's the reason why co-creation is essential. Co-creation, while your model is in place, but you need to sit along with the implementing partners, certain community stakeholders, certain experts on digital modes of payment, and then uh, tweak the model and implement it. There. That's great. Great. Thanks for sharing. That's uh, very good insights. Yeah. Cool. So we're uh, kind of um, nearing our the end of our time today. I think uh, it was a great conversation. I uh, really appreciate everyone's uh, contributions and so forth, especially uh, the participants, uh, your presence today, as well as uh, the questions that you submitted. So kind of in summary, we talked a lot about um, digital finance at the ecosystem level, in terms of government, in terms of community needs and, and infrastructure and so forth, how that can be used as a medium for poverty alleviation, access to providing access to formal financial services and so forth. We also talked a lot about uh, digital sucky as a program as well. And the kind of change that we've kind of seen in the communities on the ground and finally also like implementation you know what are some of the practical challenges would have been the kind of pivots required course correction to ensure uh, effectiveness and relevance on the ground and um, yeah again once again really uh, appreciate you all kind of uh, your time today and uh, participation in this and again same to the audience for for being present so um yeah, there's a lot of literature out there on Digital Sucky program um, and uh, would encourage you all to kind of uh, look into this further. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.